Welcome, hero. In this video, I would like to share with you my style of Tai Chi. I learned my style of Tai Chi from a VHS that I got 22 years ago in the 90s. I memorized all the moves and have been practicing them ever since. I eventually gave away the VHS and then over a decade later in the modern internet era, I went looking for it again. I couldn't remember the exact title, I couldn't remember the teacher's name, I couldn't even really remember the cover, just other than that it was blue. And uh, I couldn't find it. I, so I can't really source the information I'm going to share with you today. In the VHS, it said that Tai Chi was created by a Kung Fu master who was looking for the elixir to life. He had a dream and uh, he was shown 10 movements in this dream based on animal movements. And from that dream, Tai Chi was created. The movements that were in this VHS that I'll share with you today are those apparent first 10 moves based on the dream. Uh, tai Chi isn't really much of a fight in martial art. It's probably more in line with boxing than it is with MMA. Um, it's, I originally took it because, or learned it because I have a bad skeletal system and I figured a lot of old people do it for arthritis. Why not start early? So that's what I, I did. If you want to learn how to win a fight, I would recommend learning ju a combination of Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai. But that being said, Tai Chi, which I study, has given me some form. And I have used it with some success in street fights against one-on-one -on -one and two-on-one. -on -one. So it can provide form, but I wouldn't necessarily take it to the ring again or in a fight against an actual martial artist. Uh, one thing in MMA is you're not really allowed to use elbows. And as you'll see tonight, I don't know any kicks, but there are some elbows. And not being able to use elbows in a fight might really, really inhibit the performance of a Tai Chi fighter. And as we all know, there isn't really any fighters out there. So I'm going I use it for health and I'm gonna recommend that you do the same. Uh, I, I think we're ready. Uh, we'll start with a stretch and then I'll show you it's not a it's not a stationary stretch it's a motion stretch I think they're called kinetic stretches uh, we'll, we'll go from hands top of the body down and then I, uh, I'll show you the fundamentals of how movements are done and then we'll get into the 10 moves uh, so thank you for joining me
tilts forward a bit, so you're going to tilt, crunch a bit and tilt back. And we'll start from the feet and we'll push up. And we're going to stretch our shoulders up to our ears from back to forward and then we'll drop them as we lower our whole body again. And then back up. And down. Up. And down. And then reverse. Up. And down. Next, we'll be stretching our
one um, is this one usually for me heats up pretty quick and then we'll turn it back do it backwards and uh, this next part is a press don't go further than the toes and we'll press one two three and back and then press one two three and back and press one two three and back and what that is for is to help train your body to not go past the toes because that's a really easy way of damaging the knees so now we'll repeat on the other side again back foot face it forward and then your lead foot will step out right take the position knee no further than the toes and then rotate And you do want to try to remember to keep your hips tilted forward a bit. You, you should uh, really feel it in the top of your hips and the knee. And then we'll reverse. And press one, two, three, back. Forward, press one, two, three, and back. And then forward, press one, two, three. And finally, we will stretch our ankles. Um, okay, so I'm gonna to have to exaggerate this a bit so I can get it in camera. So, you're gonna use your toe and then point it and make a circle. And you'll do that. Rotate it in until you feel heat. And then the opposite direction.
move is called brush knee and twist step. And uh, we're going to lead with the right. So take your neutral position. And for the sake of training here, I'm going to incorporate this move to get it started. And what we'll do is we'll raise our right leg and step out. Right? Okay, maybe I shouldn't. Okay, yeah, let's, let's not do that. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start in neutral. And our hands are going to help guide our movements. So you step out, and when you're at the step out, you want this to be an exhale. And your hands up high like this. And then you'll shift your weight to your back leg. And as you do that, you're bringing... Okay, this is brush knee and twist up, sorry. Okay, so neutral step and you're going to bring your right hand back in front of your face as your left hand drops down and then when you get to your left side your right hand's going to start dropping down and your left hand's going to come up and push as you twist into a I think this is a push in real life so you go like this right that's brush knee and twist step. So we come up, hand across the face, bring it down, and then the left comes, and you're gonna turn into this as if you're pushing with your left hand. When you're shifting out is when you wanna exhale. So again from the top, breathe in. Breathe up, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. Now when you reach the end of your exhale, you're going to breathe in and bring in your left leg. And we're going to repeat going the other direction. Now your left is the lead. Right, so your right hand drops down, left hand comes and sweeps in front of the face. Once you reach your right side, your right hand's going to come up, your left will drop down, your right hand will come across as you twist to push. So in, and out. In, and out. Once you reach the end of the out, breathe in as you pull your body in, and we would go right into the next move. Right? Okay, so we're here. The next move is called Grass Sparrow's Tail. And we're going to lead with the right hand again. So, out. Now this time you're going to bring both your hands down as you breathe in. And then when you reach your left side, you're going to pretend you're gra grasping a sparrow here. Right? Just a little one. So my right hand is the lead. It's on the bottom. My left hand is going to sweep down and my right hand is going to kind of caress it as it flies off. Breathe in, pull in your, your back leg. It's going to become your 
like this move, there's not really any movement going on. So, we'll begin by taking our position, sinking in, and then, oh wait, that's wrong. Okay, so you start in neutral, and then you circle step, Sink in, 
direction there's the ball. I'm shifted all the way to my front. And as I shift back, I'm still holding the same position on the ball. Right? I can do it with a smaller one. Right, so see if my hands never change positions on the ball. Tying the coat. 
move, we'll be facing straight on and we'll be stepping back. When you step back, for this, in this cir circumstance, I'm gonna call the step back your lead leg, your rear leg, your toe's gonna to point up. All right, so, and as we go back, we're gonna sweep our, our hands out, and this is an exhale, so exhale and sweep out onto the back leg, and then you're gonna circle in underneath your armpits, and as you reach the end, you want your hands up here, so you can circle back, serves to sweep out on your way back. So this is the exhale and the inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. And then from here, we're gonna, no. When we get to here, we're gonna switch the direction. So. Exhale, and inhale, exhale, and inhale, bring the, the lead leg in this circumstance to return to your neutral, left leg will lead us backwards, and we sweep out on the exhale, circling underneath as we inhale, at the end of the move, and exhale. So when you're going back like this, you want the toe to come up. Uh, it's an unnecessary stretch to keep it pointed down. And it helps stabilize you having your toe up. All right, so exhale and then inhale. And then reverse as you exhale.
photo album.